Welcome to Whiskey's Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and today we're going to be taking a look at Blue Spot. This is a seven-year-old Irish single pot still whiskey. And if you guys are new here, I publish videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mondays are my mini series. Wednesday is my sip it or skip it series. And then on Fridays, I'm doing a top five kind of list, but I think that's going to be changed up here in the near future. I think starting in August, maybe the first Friday of August, I'm going to start doing some head to head battles with different types of whiskey. So if you are interested in that kind of information or interested in those kinds of videos and you're not subscribed to the channel and you kind of like what I'm doing here, do me a favor and subscribe. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing poured. Let's nose it, taste it, talk about it a little bit. And then if you stick around until the end, I'm going to give it a score. All right, so Blue Spot is coming in at seven years of age. Like I had mentioned, it is a Irish single pot still whiskey. This is cask strength. This is coming at 58.9% ABV, 117.8 proof. Non-chill filtered. It really doesn't say anything about no color added. So I'm guessing there might be a little bit of color added. And this is matured in bourbon barrels, Oloroso sherry butts, and Madeira casks. Triple distilled. And this is matured and bottled for Mitchells and & Son, and it's distilled by the Middleton Distillery. 750 milliliter bottle, and on the store shelves in Phoenix, Arizona, I missed buying this, but the price tag was $119. I actually ordered this bottle online, and I paid with shipping and taxes $200. And I do believe, because of the engraving on here, or the that little barcode engraving. This is the 2021 release of Blue Spot. And apparently that's the initial release after it's been out of the market since the 1950s or 60s. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Cast strength, be careful when you bring this up to your nose or that might be a reminder for me. All right, that bourbon barrel is coming across very strong. I have a lot of vanilla in here. I'm also picking up on some orange peel and to be quite honest, I don't know what Madeira wine tastes or smells like, but I do get a note in here that I'm unfamiliar with. So I'm going to put that towards the Madeira cask. And just like the majority of the single pot still Irish whiskeys, there is a spice here. And that's typically the single pot still spice. To me, it comes across as a little bit of a peppery note, but not quite black pepper. It just has an overall spicy note. Okay, digging in a little bit deeper. And then there is a subtle amount of sherry. I wouldn't say that these are the traditional dark sherry notes, the figs, the plums, the raisins. I do get a little bit of raisin, but it's on the lighter side, maybe somewhere around those golden raisins. All right, let's get this on the palate. All right, that 58.9% ABV, that definitely hits you up front. As soon as that subsides, the vanilla is there along with the spice. I would say the sherry note that came through on the nose that was a little bit lighter comes across as a little bit darker on the palate. I do get a little bit of citrus. I know I said orange peel on the nose, but I'm having a hard time finding an orange peel on the palate. I would just blanket this across the board and say it has a citrus note. I do pick up on a little bit of pineapple as well. And that strange note that I was picking up on the nose, I'm also picking up on the palate. So that's got to be the Madeira. Again, I don't know what Madeira tastes like or smells like, but there is a funky note in here that I'm not used to in Irish whiskey. So I'm going to say that's the Madeira. Let's go ahead and get that second sip because you can't really trust that first sip. See if I can pull anything else out of this. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this and let's talk about it a little bit. So on that second sip, I would say more of those darker sherry notes are coming through. Now I get a little bit more dates, raisins, figs, plums. A slight barrel bitterness in the back and that pineapple note is still there. The vanilla note is from start to finish. That is a consistent note all the way through from the arrival to the mid palate to the finish. You know, I've always said that the Redbreast 12 cast strength is one of my favorite Irish whiskeys overall. And then every time I come back to this one, I always forget how much I actually like this one. I don't think it's up there with the Redbreast 12 cast strength, but it's close. Let's go and add a little bit of water to this. Let it sit. Let me talk a little bit about Blue Spot and a little bit of the history behind it. And then while the water is doing its thing, give you a little bit of an education. And like I say in the majority of my videos, if any of this information is wrong, 
please let me know in the comments down below what I did get wrong. And if you know a little bit more than I do, please add to the conversation and uh, put it in the comments. So first of all, let's talk about the Madeira wine. This is a Portuguese fortified wine, and apparently this is made on the island of Madeira, which is southwest of Portugal. And Madeira wine is a blend of 85% red grape and 15% green grape. And I don't know the combinations of Madeira to sherry to bourbon that they use in this. And Mitchells and Sons, if you guys remember from the past video, they were wine merchants or are wine merchants. I know Mitchells and Sons, uh, a couple of generations are still influential in producing this stuff, but I don't necessarily know if they have anything to do with the actual distillation. But their family originally started as a confectioner place or a bakery of some sort, and then they became wine merchants and their emptied wine barrels were filled with whiskey from Jameson. And then they would put them underneath the streets of Dublin. They would put spots on each of the barrels to indicate the age that they think the barrels will be good at. Seven years for blue, 12 years for yellow, 15 for red. And I think the original green was somewhere around 10. Fact check me on that and leave comments down below. Now, if you also remember the history of Irish whiskey, as there was this huge overabundance of Irish whiskey and the coffee still was doing really well and scotch was king, the market collapsed for Irish whiskey. And then eventually all of these existing distilleries kind of congregated under one roof. And as that was happening, slowly but surely, each of the individual spot whiskeys started to disappear from the market. And I believe Blue Spot disappeared somewhere around the late 1950s, early 1960s, and it was gone for a long period of time until I believe 2021. And I didn't really start drinking whiskey until January of 2022, actually January 14th of 2022. So when I ended up getting this, I was really oblivious as to its history. And then once I started looking at the background of this and I looked at the etched label, the little barcode on here, I realized that this was the original reintroduction of Blue Spot to the United States. And I don't really necessarily know how many releases they have of this, the 2021, the 2022 for sure. And I don't necessarily know if the 2023 has come out yet. So if you guys have the new batch of the 2023, let me know in the comments down below and what do you think of it and what the ABV is. I think the 2021 and the 2022 version had the same ABV at 58.9. Again, just like always, I'm not an expert. Let me know if any of that is right or wrong in the comments down below. And the last thing before I actually get a third sip on this with the water, apparently the Madeira wine is supposed to have a stewed apple, hazelnut, and sweet spice to it. And I don't get any of that in there. Now I would say that there is a little bit of an apple in here, but I don't know if I can equate that to the Madeira because all of the spot whiskeys to me have an apple note to it. Apple vanilla. The water definitely calmed down the ABV. I don't have much of a ethanol burn in my nose. It seems to have opened up a little bit more. I get some floral notes in here. And to me right now, the vanilla note is the one that's the most dominant, followed by a little bit of the spice and then the sherry on the back end. Let's go ahead and get that third sip. All right, my initial thought, I am gonna say, I like this with water than without. It's opened it up a little bit. It's calmed that ethanol burn down. I can actually get more flavor out of it. Vanilla, pineapple, the sherry sweetness is in here. It's not quite peppery, but I would put this at a, like a cooking spice, but not at the level of black pepper. Figs, dates, raisins, and plums. I would say the sweetness that I'm getting is just before they're completely ripe. The citrus note is still there. There's a little bit of tanginess that comes with citrus, and I do believe I have that here. Let's get that fourth sip in here, and then I think I'm ready to give it a score. Fruity sweet, vanilla, spice, cooking spice, pineapple, citrus, tannin, little bitterness on the back end, finishes long, and the fruity sweetness spice lingers quite a while. All of that is very good. And because of that, I'm going to put this one at 3.99, not quite at four. And I would say there's two reasons why this would not be a four. I think the spice and the ABV or the ethanol is 
maybe it was a, a bit too much for me. Even though I do like the fruit sweetness and that vanilla note, it might be the Madeira cask that is throwing it off for me just a little bit. I think I like the Marsala and other wine finishes other than the Madeira. If indeed that's what I'm actually picking up on as that undefinable note. So because of that, 3.99, not quite four. And I definitely like it with water than without. So I think that's pretty much all I have to say about the Blue Spot. If you guys have had an opportunity to have this, look at your bottle. Let me know if it's the 21, 22, or the 23 release. Do you like it? Do you not like it? And where does it rank with the lineup of the spots? And if you have done a comparison, how does this rank with the Red Breasts? I'd be interested to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments down below. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So you guys enjoy your journey, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.